Hey, what's going on, guys? Well, I still have this uh, Toyota Camry, and uh, I'm waiting on parts to show up before I'm totally done with it. Um, today's super nice outside, so I figured I'd just make a video real quick, and um, let's uh, let's play with some tools today. All right, so I got my leak down tester and a compression tester. I'm go ahead and do a leak down test and uh, show you how that goes down. And uh, while we're at it, do a compression test. Um, this engine here on this thing's got a bunch of miles, so kind of curious to see uh, what kind of numbers we get. So it's got 192,000 miles. Yeah, so you want to do a leak down test. Normally, when you uh, when you have some type of engine problem, it'll help you uh, diagnose something. Like if you have, think you have a blown head gasket, if the car's misfiring, you might think it might have a valve train issue. Um, that's basically what a leak down test is for. Um, compression test, it'll kind of tell you, you know, if that cylinder is making compression. I mean, straight up, that's what it is. Um, you'll see in a minute when I go ahead and, and show you how to do it real quick, I guess. And uh, we'll see what kind of numbers we get on this old turd. All right, so step number one is go ahead and warm the car up if it's not warm. It's a really cold day today, so um, I let it run for a little while, warmed it up. It's already done. Um, this is going to help you get a more accurate reading on the gauges. All right, like I said before, I already warmed the motor up. Um, pull the spark plugs out, spark plug wires are pulled out, you're going to want to pull all of them out, all right, because you're going to need to turn this motor over, because you're going to need to get the, uh, the cylinder you're going to test, you're going to get that cylinder up to top dead center. And uh, how you figure that out is I just, I end up using a little piece of coat hanger, stick it in here, and now you're actually going to need to rotate the engine, and uh, you're going to watch the coat hanger rise up. When it gets to the highest point, that's top dead center. Okay, now uh, to rotate the engine, a lot of people jack the car up, take the wheel off, and want to turn the crank pulley. You don't really have to do that once you get all the plugs out. You can actually go after like something as simple as this little bolt on the alternator here. Okay, and it doesn't take much once you get all the plugs out. As you can see, Mr. Coat Hanger's going up. And when she kind of stops going up, that's gonna be my top dead center. And I'm gonna stop turning the engine. All right, that's about it right there. Because you want it to be top dead center, all the valves closed, and that's gonna give me top dead center, all the valves closed. Grab my hose here. It does have the adapter on it. It makes it a little bit longer. And just thread this guy into the spark plug hole. All right, so now you're gonna need to calibrate your gauge. Okay, you're gonna need some air. Okay, as far as the, your compressor in the air, uh, if it has a regulator on it, I probably wouldn't set it past 100 PSI, okay? All right, as far as your gauge goes, um, first thing you wanna do before you hook it up is you wanna make sure this guy's turned all the way to the left, okay? Turned off. Then we can hook up the air, okay? We're gonna need to calibrate this now all the way to zero right here, and all we're gonna do is turn this clockwise till we get there, okay? Now we don't wanna to go too far, because that is what we're actually gonna read. That shows us our leakage. I'm gonna stop right at zero. Okay, once we get to zero, you just push this in, okay, and then I'll lock it right where it needs to be. And it's calibrated, it's pretty simple. Now we're just gonna take this end and hook it up to the adapter on the cylinder. All right, so check it out. As far as the leakage goes on cylinder one, we're looking at a little bit over 5%, which is about 6%, okay, which means that cylinder's in really good shape. The valves are seating nice and good. The piston rings are in good shape. This is really, really good, okay. Now, if it was actually in the low side and you can hear a hissing noise, this is where it's gonna help you diagnose where um, you might have an issue. So if you hear air coming out of the dipstick, you have a problem with your rings. If you actually see um, bubbles coming out of your coolant here, okay, um, you probably have a head gasket issue. Now, if you can hear air um, coming out of one of these holes, one of those spark plug holes, um, you could have uh, a head gasket issue also. If you hear air coming out of the intake here, okay, you have probably have a problem with one of your intake valves. Same thing with the exhaust. If you can hear it kind of flowing through the exhaust down here, exhaust valve. It'll definitely help you figure out if, you know, if it's low, where you're kind of having an issue at. But this cylinder is in great shape. Really, really good. Really, really good for that miles. Go Toyota. Yeah, so cylinder two, it looks even better. We're looking at about 4%. I'm gonna go ahead and just stop there 
and uh, do the compression check. It's all under one. All right, so I've got my hose for the compression tester. It does have the adapter it comes with on it, and I'm just gonna thread that into cylinder one. All right, so that's threaded in. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna go over to your throttle body, and to get the most accurate reading, you'd probably wanna take all the air cleaner stuff off. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because this stuff looks pretty old and brittle. But uh, we're gonna wanna wedge the throttle, the throttle body plate. We're gonna wanna wedge it open, okay? This is gonna give us the most accurate reading as we can get. All right, got it uh, wedged open like that. And uh, I'm gonna be using this tool here, this is a little starter switch here. And uh, this is gonna allow me to go ahead and crank the car over without actually having to go in and turn the key, okay? It's a little bit of an advantage doing this way because I can hold the gauge, hit that button, and watch everything happen right here on this side instead of cranking it over uh, inside the car then doing a bunch of running around, okay? If you don't have one of these, what you're gonna need to do first is you're gonna need to go to the fuse box and uh, find the fuel pump relay or the fuel pump fuse pull that out so when you do crank it it doesn't spray fuel into the cylinders because that's going to give you an inaccurate reading you could lock up the uh, lock up the engine also um, if you do it this way we're never touching the key we're actually never energizing the fuel pump we don't need to pull the fuses we're not we don't need to do any of that it saves you some steps so the way this works is one side just hooks up to battery and this other side um, this little clamp here actually will tag into the um, starter signal wire that goes into the starter Sometimes these are real easy to use, sometimes they're not. Depends on where the starter's located at. And this Toyota, it's right freaking here. So it's super duper easy. And uh, the connection, we have like a hot source here. And then there's actually a wire on the starter. Let's see if I can get a better angle. There's a connector that goes in the starter right here. All right, and there's a wire that goes into it. I'm just gonna tap into that wire that's right there. And what I have tapped to do, I actually have like a pick tool that's actually shoved in the wire right now. And all I have to do is just clamp onto this, okay? Makes things really, really simple and super duper fast. Okay, this, this is gonna be way easier. No fuel, no uh, digging around looking for fuses. Don't have to go in the car, I can do everything right here. All I do is hook my gauge up and I'm gonna spin the motor over at least three times and see what numbers we get. Okay, so what we want to be looking for is at least 180 PSI and we're gonna We want to see we want to do at least like um, Somewhere no no more over five uh, Puffs, okay, I guess you can say or rotations Okay, so that's about five you can hear it kind of puffing about five times and we're sitting at about, mm, about 190 which is great, which is really really good with this engine. You don't want to see below 150 you're in bad shape and you're going to want to test all the other cylinders to see um, how close all of them are to each other but uh, that's pretty much it with the compression test man pretty simple i'm going to go ahead and assume that you know this engine's in pretty darn good shape for 190,000 miles all right guys so that's pretty much it with the leak down and compression test uh, nice little short and sweet video hope you learned a little bit of something if you did do me a favor hit the thumbs up button um if you have any questions or you got any comments or whatever you know leave them down below and i hope to see you guys in the next one later Damn, that's not a good.